mental health is a topic that is simply just not brought up enough, especially when it comes to mental health and balancing that in the workplace. Thankfully, our generation has been trying to boost this and boost this topic and having it being talked about more. But mental health and balancing your mental well-being with your life and your responsibilities and your hobbies, that is something that will always, always, always be an important topic of discussion. And what is a career that everyone seems to want to go into now? Content creation! And can you blame them? I mean, hey, I'm a little content creator and I love what I do. It's not common that you see content creators really talk about the struggles that they have with their mental health and their mental well-being and being able to balance life, work, school on top of the content that they are creating online. The main kind of content that I create is live streaming. I love to stream on Twitch. I love chatting with my community and I try to stream every day. I'm not able to push out a stream every day like I would like to because sometimes I just have bad mental days. Us content creators are pretty lucky to be able to make our own schedules and not have to, you know, clock into work if maybe we're waking up, we're not feeling the best. And because of this flexibility when it comes to our schedules, I thought that it'd be really interesting to uh, talk with and interview other streamers that I know from all different kinds of backgrounds, all different kinds of view counts, many different schedules. And just ask them how they deal with this balance or imbalance really the point of this video is to bring awareness to mental health and mental illness and overall just taking care of yourself whether that's self-care physically or mentally live streaming is very different from other forms of content and other jobs we are put on a stage and we are there to entertain when we hit that start streaming button, we have chatters come in and they are constantly watching us. They are constantly perceiving us and we have to entertain them. We don't want them to leave. We can't just really take a break while we're live, right? This line of work is very different. And that is why I think it is important to discuss how exactly this constant state of being perceived and having to entertain feeling like you have to constantly push out content or else you're going to lose viewers, lose subscribers, lose supporters. How is that affecting us? I mean, I know my answer, but I decided to interview many people. Interviewing other streamers made me realize that I'm definitely not the only one struggling with this and that it is not easy to balance life and mental health. I received some amazing responses from the people I interviewed and some incredible advice and I highly recommend you watch till the end to see all of the amazing responses that I received. I did a video similar to this where I interviewed 100 streamers asking them why exactly they got into streaming and a lot of them actually mentioned that they did so because they were struggling with their mental health or that they thought that streaming could potentially help and it has. And I find that very interesting because yes of course streaming helps and has helped a lot of people with their mental well-being and their overall well-being. I mean, a lot of us started during the pandemic when things were really rough and we were stuck inside and streaming and having that connection and that interaction that we were missing in real life, I think really helped a lot of people mentally. Streaming is this positive mental space for a lot of people, but it can also be very negative. I know for me, I love going live and being able to kind of Forget my responsibilities, forget about anything that happened during the day and just have fun with my chat, play a video game, relax, entertain. But at the same time, it is hard. The whole point of this was to just raise awareness that, hey, it's not as easy as it sounds, man. Balancing work and your mental well-being, regardless of your career, is not easy. So this is a deeper insight as to how creators feel their advice what they do to make sure that they are prioritizing themselves and if you are a streamer and maybe you're struggling with this and you need help to fight this balance i hope this video helps you i interviewed over 50 streamers asking them how they balance their mental well-being along with content creation and i collected some statistics there were certain topics that were brought up more than others so i want to touch on those specific topics these topics include things that the streamers struggle with in their lives or things that helped them 
to balance and prioritize themselves while also pushing out content to their viewers. In my last video where I interviewed 100 streamers asking them about how they started streaming, I kind of had a hypothesis and an idea of what the streamers were going to say. I had some theories, but this time I don't have any theories. I really just did not know where this was going. I kind of figured a lot of people would mention the idea of putting yourself first and prioritizing yourself, but I also feel like that is a little bit of an obvious answer, so I didn't really collect any uh, statistics or information on that. But you will hear that being brought up in multiple answers that I received. 6% of the responses that I received mentioned that streaming can be very exhausting at times or that it is easy to get exhausted from this. 14% of the responses I received mentioned boundaries and mentioned that setting boundaries for yourself may be between you and how often you stream or you and your viewers, whatever it may be. 14% of the responses mentioned boundaries. And you will, of course, see how these topics were brought up exactly later when I read to you all the responses that I received. 28% of the responses I received mentioned a schedule, whether that be that they follow some sort of schedule in their day to day, whether setting a schedule, potentially a stream schedule, helped them or hurt them. As a matter of fact, when I was reading over the responses, a lot of people said having a stream schedule helped them. For me personally, I used to have a stream schedule where I would stream at certain times and certain days of the week. And that actually, I think it hurt my mental well-being more than it helped. To me, it made streaming feel like more of a job rather than a hobby. And for me, that's not what I wanted. I do at times treat streaming like a job because it is my job. It is an income source for me. but. I don't want it to feel like one. Other people are different. Other people enjoy having that schedule and clocking in for their shifts. Keep in mind, everybody is different and what works for you may not work for somebody else and vice versa. Most of these responses that mentioned friends and family said that they liked to reach out to their friends and reach out to their family, make sure that they still have that time with them and they're not spending all of their day working on content. A lot of responses also mentioned that support systems were helpful for, for them. So surrounding themselves with supportive friends, maybe other streamers really helped them. And I can agree that surrounding myself with supportive people and the amazing friends that I have met through the streaming community has helped my mental well-being a lot. 2% of the responses mentioned depression, 4% mentioned anxiety. This next piece of data that I collected didn't really surprise me at all, but 38% of the responses I received mentioned breaks and taking breaks and that it's important to do so if you feel like you need to and I 1000% agree. Never be afraid to take a break. If you're worried that your viewers will not return, they weren't real supporters anyways. Always, always, always put yourself first. If that means taking a day off of streaming, a week off of streaming, a month off of streaming, a semester off of streaming because you feel like you need to focus on other things and you need to focus on yourself and how you feel and how you are doing and you don't have the energy or the attitude to entertain for others take that break streaming and live streaming content creation will always be there but you need to put yourself first and take care of yourself first that is what is important at least that is my opinion and i'm sure a lot of people share that opinion 16% of the responses I received mentioned burnout. I actually thought that more streamers were going to mention the topic of burnout, but this kind of goes along with everything else, really, especially exhaustion, because streaming can be exhausting and it can be repetitive, just like any job. You're going to probably get burnt out at some point, and that is, again, kind of a time when you might want to take a break, take a step back, see how you can revamp your content, revamp what you're doing. How can you make it so that you are enjoying what you are doing? For example, I know I talked about how I set a stream schedule for myself and it didn't really help me. As a matter of fact, it made me feel burnt out. It made me feel like I was working a job that I did not want to work at. I am now going to read out the responses that I received. I would like to say I'm so incredibly grateful and thankful to those who are participating in this video. I appreciate you more than you know. This video would not be here without you and your amazing answers. I got amazing feedback, amazing advice, 
And for me personally, this might sound bad, but something that helps me mentally is knowing that there are other people who are struggling as well. Obviously, I don't want anyone else to struggle, you know? But it is nice to know that you're not alone in those struggles. Here's proof that you're not, okay? I can guarantee every streamer, every content creator out there, we got we, we got some things off up here, right? Everyone does. Not even streamers and content creators, every person, okay? Just a lot of people don't talk about it. I'm a pretty big mental health advocate. I always try to raise awareness for this topic. So this is me trying to do so and other streamers trying to do so. I will again say that what works for someone may not work for you. Know you, know your boundaries, know your limits, know what you enjoy doing. Try out some of these techniques that streamers mention or don't. Hey, I'm not your boss. <clears throat> Take anyone's advice as well as mine, you know, with a grain of salt. To my knowledge, none of the people who I interviewed are mental health professionals or anything like that. Don't get mad at us, okay? You don't get mad at us. Enjoy. For these responses, I will either have a screenshot of their message and what they sent me, or if it was maybe too long or just couldn't really fit into a screenshot, I will be reading the text and I will have the name of the content creator somewhere on the screen. All of the content creators will be linked below in the description. Again, thank you all so much. These people are amazing. Highly recommend you check them out. I'll start with my answer. How do I balance my mental well-being and streaming? I try to stream every day, but of course that's not going to happen. I'm going to have days where I feel anxious. I have an anxiety disorder. So there, there, there's, there's just some days where I wake up and I'm like, okay, it's not going to be a good day today. We're going to be anxious. We're going to be on edge. We're going to be a little shaky today. It happens. <clears throat> if I start to feel that way and I still feel that way a couple hours before I want to stream, I will typically go ahead and call off stream and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm very lucky to have a very supportive community who is also full of mental health advocates. So they're very just amazing. When it comes to me having to take breaks, they always want me to put myself first and I appreciate that. Sometimes I do feel, I guess, a little bit guilty when I have to cancel my streams or postpone streams or maybe have to cancel collabs because of anxiety but at the end of the day i know that what i'm doing is what's best and that's what i have to remind myself and tell myself <clears throat> do not push yourself to do longer streams than you need to i know streaming marathons draw on a lot of attention and i really enjoy doing them but if you have to you know end your stream before your timer hits zero to take care of yourself physically or mentally please do so do not push yourself okay it's not worth it for example, I recently hit 1,300 followers on Twitch. Thank you. So I streamed for 13 hours. After those 13 hours, I decided that I was going to take the next day off because I, as much as I wanted to stream and I felt like streaming that day, I just thought it would have been better for me to really take a break and just take a breather. Whether I needed it or not, I did it anyways. Really quickly before I share you guys the responses i just want to thank the sponsor of this video which is sea geek it's currently concert season i know everyone's favorite artists are going on tour right now and if you're like me you want to go see all of them and you want tickets and sea geek is the best place to go for this on sea geek you will find the best deals and you can also actually get a refund which um legally i can't say any names but we all know those ticket selling sites that you know love to charge you extra if you you're like oh i might get a refund eventually you know they're gonna charge you extra and then you have to like go through like insurance and then they you still don't get a refund um yeah you don't have to deal with that with SeatGeek, and that's like one of my favorite parts of it they also give you the best bang for your buck they make it so easy to buy tickets genuinely if there's any kind of event anywhere whether that's a concert sports game literally anything i go to SeatGeek immediately to see if they're selling tickets for it and they usually are I'm not the kind of person to promote something that I don't actually believe in. I 1000% back SeatGeek and everything, and I'm proud to say that I am an ambassador with them. So if you want to buy tickets anywhere while also supporting me, all you gotta do, create an account on SeatGeek, get your tickets, use my code Riley, but the L's of one at checkout for $20 off as long as it is your first purchase on SeatGeek. That's a lot. Thank you again, SeatGeek. Use the code. Why not? Here are the cool responses. I love creating content. It's a passion that I grind hard for every day. 
Those are the worst kind of mental traps you can find yourself in as a human because you don't realize how much time, effort, and energy you're putting into something you love and you can get tired without even realizing. I used to do 12-hour streams every day. After a few months, I started to feel exhausted and my body wouldn't let me leave my bed some weekends. I'd apologize to my community for not being able to celebrate the weekend with them. They'd all be understanding, but I still felt bad. I ended up taking weeks off because I needed to recover. Streaming isn't just physically exhausting, but it is mentally so tiring too. Dealing with everyone's comments whilst doing your own thing is a lot for any person to handle. My advice to streamers would be to set boundaries with yourself. Give yourself strict time to so really focus up on content and time to switch off. Don't get mad at yourself for not achieving goals in that time either. Just see what happens. Let things flow. It's usually in those moments that creativity and genius come together to create something amazing. Personally, I set aside time to work on my content during the week and make sure to do nothing but touch grass on the weekends, speak to my friends, and let my family know I love them by spending time with them. Those are things that make me happy and remind me how much I love my life. Now I'm a mental health advocate and remind streamers that regular breaks are important. I'm always happy for people to reach out if they want to chat and we'll check in on people who may be going through a rough time. I post mental health related content across my socials in the hopes it opens up discussions for everyone so nobody is left dealing with anything alone. I've struggled with my mental health my whole life and I'm diagnosed with chronic severe depression and anxiety, so I'm lucky to be well medicated which helps me function highly. I'm very motivated by being useful or making other people proud which applies to school as well as content creation. I think the most important thing is to have a good support system around you. I feel very blessed to have a group of friends who are constantly cheering me on but I haven't had that and I know it's hard to come by. Whenever I'm feeling hopeless, angry, or hating myself, I like to go run and then take a shower. I give myself 25 minutes to run walk as much as I want, and then I shower, so it really doesn't take up too much time. At the end of the day, content creation isn't the end-all be-all of life. It is more important to prioritize your personal connections with yourself, others, and nature first. This will help you be a more mindful and grounded person. I found that when I couldn't have a consistent schedule due to work, having days I 100% knew I wasn't going to stream made it a lot less stressful for me to balance work, life, and streaming. That way, I could still get a break, but also make the most of the time whenever I could stream. Best advice, don't stream if you don't want to. If you're sick, tired, or just up, aren't up for it, you gotta look after yourself so that you don't associate streaming with negativity. How I balance streaming and taking care of my mental health is my after stream routine and taking breaks when I don't feel like streaming. Sometimes you just need some time to yourself and I think that's really important. I didn't have responsibilities while doing content creation until recently, and I've known for a long time that streaming and grinding 24-7 isn't healthy. I always try to do content creation certain days, and other days just relax or do other hobbies I enjoy. It took me a while to learn that not everyone's going to like you and your content. Even after streaming, I raid and run personally. I love to just relax when I can, because content creation can be exhausting. I just try to be intuitive and listen to my body. If my body tells me today that we want to play Coral Island, then that's what I'll do. While being disciplined, of course. If I know I have deadlines coming, I'll set rules for myself. Like if I have a sponsored video to turn over, I'll tell myself that after I reach a threshold, I'll reward myself with some gaming. And after a game or two, I'll go and edit. It's all about balance. I am the worst at balancing, but because I'm working my day job so much, I stream maybe once a week. I know that if I push too much, I'll burn out and I don't want my content to be any less than what I strive for. I want my community to see the best version of me and I'm trying to get a stream schedule going, but life is a very unscheduled thing, so I go with the flow. For me, I definitely prioritize taking mental health days when I need it. Even though this is my only source of income right now, it's really hard to take the awful negative comments with a grain of salt and realize, hey, they're doing this because they don't get enough attention. But I try not to let it show that it bothers me. If I don't react in the way they think, it stops much sooner. Taking time away from streaming, editing, and making sure I do plenty of self-care helps keep a good balance. I personally balance self-care through creating hard boundaries within my stream and banning chatters who make me uncomfortable, no matter if they did something or not. It's your space and you need to feel safe and comfortable. I'm also a bit at big advocate for breaks, whether that's in streams or breaks from streams. Your health comes first. An example of this is when you have a stream schedule, but the day you aren't feeling up to it, cancel or postpone. Your community won't be mad at you practicing self-care. As someone who works part-time and streams on the side, finding time to do self-care is a little hard to do. The days I don't work turn into the days I would plan to stream, but whenever I feel like I don't have the spoons to stream, that's when I'll do some self-care. When I do feel like that, I try not to force anything or myself and just let everything be. A form of self-care I would do every now and then whenever I can find the time to is a face mask and watch my favorite comfort movie, Ratatouille. I'll turn off all the lights in my room, light up my cinnamon candle, and play the movie while doing some deep cleaning skincare stuff. 
As for self-love, I'm going to be honest, I'm terrible at self-love. Though I always find myself sending lots of love to my best friend whenever I feel down and bad about myself because I know she sends the same amount of love back. I really only stream when I'm feeling mentally ready to. If not, then I'll take the day or night and watch YouTube and play games off stream. I also turn off the view account on OBS because the number being as low as it tends to be stresses me out and all that. The way I balance the two is blocking my time and setting boundaries with myself. I like to set aside specific times or make specific plans to practice self-care, whether it be watching my favorite shows, working out, or just like taking a mental break. And if anything to do with streaming or content creation negatively impacts my well-being or ability to practice my self-care, I'm not afraid to step away for as long as I need to refocus. I think this can apply to anything and not just streaming, but the importance of taking breaks and unplugging every now and then. I think that a lot of it definitely is choosing specific days of the week to stream instead of streaming every day, which I know is something that a lot of streamers do. For instance, I only stream on Mondays and Thursdays with rare exceptions, which allows me to spend the rest of my time doing what I want. The rest of it is that I try to stream stuff that I want to do anyway. Like my stream today was me making music with a new plugin that I found that basically works like a video game. I was already going to do it. I just decided to wait until I streamed so that I could milk some content out of it too. That's basically it. I balance self-care and love with streaming simply by taking breaks when I'm feeling overwhelmed and like it's too much or I spoil myself with things I like. For example, getting myself a Dr. Pepper or iced coffee or buying myself something nice like flowers or a shirt I've been wanting. I'm currently on break from streaming till July for personal reasons along with a mental health break. This, this break has definitely been nice and it helps you recuperate when you return. For me, balancing things while not draining myself mentally can be incredibly difficult, but something that helps a ton is having specific days for specific things. For example, I have one day I spend editing short form content, then I have a day for streaming or for recording or planning, etc. I also have two days off where I spend it with friends and family, play games, and clean my workspace to keep my mind organized. Another thing that helps is going with the flow of what I feel. I tend to bounce around on different tasks, so I'll set a timer to do this task for a certain amount of time, switch to another one I'm interested in for a bit, and repeat. Honestly, with streaming and my mental health, a lot of it has come just from reframing my attitude towards what I do. I don't view streaming as a numbers game, I approach it as a chance to spend time with my community and the friends I've made in it. That helps me to avoid tying things to myself worth unintentionally. When people come on and are weird or harassing me, it also is easier to separate them and their words from my value. Because from the frame of community, these individuals and their opinions have no value to me, they are not bettering my space. I balance both by simply not streaming if I don't feel like it. If my mental or physical health isn't doing well, I won't stream, instead I may edit some shorts to be posted. But if I feel too ill, I never force myself to make content. I think you make your best content when you feel your best. I found out that when I was streaming every day or without a schedule in general, I was quickly getting burnt out and it started to become not fun and something I dreaded. So I switched to Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays instead and allowed myself to stream on weekends only if I felt like it. I also try my best not to beat myself up if I end up skipping one of my scheduled days because I realize my viewers will still be there even if I go inactive for a month. Taking care of your mental well-being while doing content creation in general is a very difficult thing to do. As a content creator who focuses on video creation and music production and sometimes streaming, focusing on it alone is difficult if you have mental health issues. The easiest way to deal with all of this is to balance your content creation work ethic with your pe personal life. For me personally, I'm still learning to manage my mental health struggles while managing to post two long-length videos, one or two streams a week, while in fact managing to deal with an IRL job as well. The real answer to this one once you find it is balance, being able to determine when you need to step back and as well when it's right to come back to it. Honestly, I don't really do too much. I just kind of treat it the same as when I'm playing with my friends, but it's kind of like if more friends were there, which is what usually keeps my energy up because in my brain it's just the same as any other night, just more friends there. I also make sure not to stream when my energy is low and my brain is going all beep boop because then forcing myself to socialize when I'm not doing too hot will make my social battery, energy, mental state, etc. go down insanely fast and I'd end up burnt out as all hell. Overall, I just make sure to surround myself with people I enjoy being around streaming to keep it fun for me and also make sure I have a good support system outside of streaming. Self-care and streaming slash content creation go hand in hand. When you're making videos, you want to feel your best. You want to be happy, funny, entertaining, and energized. You want to make the best stuff you can, but in order to do so, you got to feel your best. One thing that really helped me is quality over quantity. Making quality videos and streams makes you feel good and proud of what you've created. Setting boundaries is so important for your mental health, especially as a female content creator. People on the internet are horrible. Don't be afraid to delete comments and ban people. It helps you create this community you want. 
If you need to take a break, take that break. Burnout is so real. Every night, I try to take time for myself and no screens allowed. I take care of my body and reflect on my day. I wash my face, get ready for the night, and think about how I can improve. Reflecting is so important. As I stream, the biggest thing I do in taking care of myself is surrounding myself with people that love me and have a mutual feeling. I always tend to give myself the love I need to give myself, and I always take a day or two off if needed. Every time before I stream, I do some deep breath exercises and meditate. I think one of the most important things for balancing your mental health and streaming is surrounding yourself with things you enjoy. I'm very extroverted, so sometimes streaming can feel like such a hassle and waste of time when I can be out doing things with my friends. So having good and supportive friends in your workspace is a really good way to stay motivated. Similarly, if they're good friends, they'll be able to follow along with you, and they'll be able to tell if something is stressing you out or if you need a break to pull back or if something isn't worth it compared to the mental strain it's causing. I think good supportive friends, plus remembering that breaks are allowed, are a good way to take care of yourself and streaming. You're your own boss, take care of yourself. Most important part about mental health with content creation is understanding that you're doing it for yourself. Of course, I want as many people to watch and enjoy my content, but at the end of the day, this is for my own self-fulfillment. Turning off the viewer count is the first step in this, as the more you try to control the numbers, the more the numbers control you. The best thing you can do for a healthy balance in your stream is unapologetically be yourself. Your audience will enjoy you for who you are. Finally, do what you want to do. If you want to content pivot to video essays and vlogs, do it. If you want to make shit posts and memes, do it. It's your channel, not your viewers. Streaming actually helps improve my mental health a lot, but whenever I'm down and can't show my normal self on stream, I take time to myself by improving my surroundings. I clean my room, house, take a shower, and overall hang out with my family. Just sitting next to my little sibling makes me happy. Besides when I'm sad, I strengthen my mental health and own physical core through boxing and going to the gym every Monday and Wednesday. I keep a strong routine and put myself over others. So, I find that streaming and content creation and just networking for all of that in general can be very draining and exhausting if you're someone who's prone to overthinking and just getting general overstimulation. The best things to help me are making sure I give myself a little love every day. This can be like cooking something nutritious for myself, making sure I drink enough water, indulging in a sweet treat, doing my skincare routine, letting myself have a little extra TikTok time, connecting with your support system. Being online is hard, so it feels good to hang out with my family, my boyfriend, or my IRL friends because it gives me that, that little reset and social media breather that I need every so often. Like this weekend, I visited my boyfriend in Utah and it was very nice to just not have my phone all weekend or feel like there was any pressure I was just allowed to be. Sometimes you gotta listen to your body and rest up, especially for full-time streamers who have other obligations and it can be very overwhelming, so knowing that breaks are okay and breaks are necessary help a lot. Remember... You're in control of your space. Sometimes my stress can come from within the community where someone might be posing an issue or might not feel like I'm seen or allowed to talk about something specific, but I've recently just been more open about my situations and quick to take action against people who give bad vibes or make me uncomfortable, and streaming feels like it's revitalizing versus draining. You just gotta remember that it's your space. If someone you don't want in your house is there, you're gonna do what you can to boot them out so you feel safe. Your stream should feel the same. Honestly, for me, streaming itself is a big part of maintaining my mental well-being. Streaming is my favorite hobby. I love doing it. I would be sitting at my PC playing games for hours either way. So with streaming, it allows me to be more social and meet lots of cool people, plus gain lots of neat opportunities I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So the social aspect of it really helps my mental well-being because obviously humans are social creatures. And without streaming, I wouldn't have a lot of the friends I do have, and I would be missing out on a big community aspect that comes with it. I'm also lucky enough to have created a community of very understanding people who get that mental health comes first, so they're never mad or upset when I cut a stream short or miss a stream for the sake of caring for my brain. I think balancing streaming and caring for my mental well-being would be a lot more difficult if I didn't have those types of people watching my streams because I really hate disappointing people so I would definitely stress about it more if I didn't know the vast majority of my viewers totally understand the need for a mental health day now and then. I don't need to worry about balancing it as much with where I am at as long as I still remember to get up off my butt and touch grass at least once a day, my mental well-being really does benefit from streaming. I'm fairly new to content creation and streaming, but I would say my process is constantly reminding my brain to be kind to myself whenever I lack motivation and celebrating when I feel like I've had a successful stream or uploaded a video I'm satisfied with. I'm still trying to find my niche and I'm trying to be patient with myself as I discover what I want to create for myself and my community. Whenever I'm having severe stream issues, I take a few days off to let the frustration fade as I try to figure out the problem. 
I know it's important to not let those things bother you, but I'm trying to build my resilience to stream challenges as naturally, naturally as possible. And on that note, if I'm streaming and suddenly lose motivation for whatever reason, I try to end as soon as possible, so streaming never feels like a chore because I always want to make sure I enjoy it. I'm working on my consistency, but I remind myself that my journey is specific to me, and making comparisons will only damage my process. I try to remain in my own personal bubble in terms of my progress because it's been way more fun for me that way. I'm still figuring it all out as I go, but I feel very optimistic about my potential as a creator. I balance taking care of my mental health and streaming in multiple ways. Firstly, if I'm having a rough day, whether it's emotionally or physically, I won't stream because when I get mad or hurt, I will not stream. I want anyone that pops up in my stream to see me in a good mood. If I stream when I'm not in a good mood, my tone will be different and I'll be getting mad over everything. Sure, getting mad over a game is fine, but getting mad at anything other than the game is not. I wouldn't watch someone like that, so why would I want to stream like that? When I'm not streaming, I'm either at work or chilling, chatting to people in a Discord channel to keep being social, seeing what's up, having a good time while playing games and having fun, and meeting some awesome people. Gotta socialize and not be a hermit. This next answer is probably a repeated one, and that is going to the gym. Listen, I for one just started going back to the gym because I haven't in six months due to lack of motivation. My first day back, I was only there for 30 minutes. Sure, I didn't do everything in one day, but just going and doing something is better than just staying in bed scrolling on TikTok. I love streaming, and it's okay to take mental health breaks when necessary. My mental health will always be my top priority over streaming. I balance self-care and streaming by just going out with the family more often than not because they always make me happy and reassure me too. They're so fun, loving, and sweet. Helped me with my doubts as well as with life. It is also important for me to take breaks in streaming so that I won't avoid burnout because during the beginning of the year, I was extremely burnt out so I took a step back and as I took a step back, I realized how much it has helped me in watching other streams also made me miss streaming so much and get back into consistency and my love for it. So take breaks when you need to, everyone. My schedule. 4 to 6 a.m. to 11 to 2 p.m. Sleep time. After an hour or so, I stay in bed eat lunch, do chores, and other responsibilities. From 7 to 8 p.m., I spend time with my family. From 8 to 4 a.m., I do commission work or I stream. It's a bit more loose than that, but this is generally how my schedule looks. Working makes me happy, but I reserve my Saturdays through Mondays for rest and with my family. Again, things adjust depending on the situation and the urgency of the work I have to do, but self-care to me is making sure I spend time with my family, get to relax, and play games with my friends. One of the things I do as well is I follow a strict, sh strict stream schedule because it keeps me on track and motivated. Self-love for me also makes sure that I keep my community a safe and comfy place for everybody. My boundaries are very set in stone, so I don't really care if my growth is slow because I'm so uptight with my rules. I just straight up ban people that make me uncomfortable. Surrounding myself with people that understand and respect my boundaries makes streaming really fun and relaxing because I don't have to tolerate stuff for an audience, if that makes sense. Personally, still have trouble balancing streaming and mental health. However, I'm able to tell when I've reached an emotional or mental limit, which is the only reason I can balance it all. Once I've gotten to a certain point, I'm able to step back and take breaks. Always treat streaming as a simple hobby and nothing too serious so as not to put pressure on myself. This is usually what works for me. Balancing self-care and streaming has definitely been a challenge, but this is mostly because I love streaming and content creation so much that I tend to confuse it for self-care. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it can't be considered self-care, but I can hyper-fixate on it for hours and days, resulting in me forgetting to do the actual caring activities such as eating, getting enough sleep, and going outside. I recently started a new job. This is my first full-time job, and I actually think it's helped me a lot in self-care and love. This is because there's now an external force requiring me energy and focus. All of a sudden, I have a routine in my life with dedicated lunch breaks and time spent outside my home. It takes up a lot of energy, so I often head to bed immediately after I get home. Because of this, I've come very aware of the available spoons I have in a day, and I've learned to plan my time spent on content creation properly. At first, I was worried that I would lose progress if I wouldn't spend 24 hours a day thinking about how to improve my content, but over the past few weeks, I've learned that taking breaks is a great way to refuel your mind and stay passionate. I now stream three times a week and feel like I'm more relaxed than ever. The way I balance my mental well-being as a streamer is always putting myself first, in that if I need a break, I take a break. It may be detrimental, detrimental to my growth in the long run, but my mental health is more important. If I need to not have someone in my circle, I take that person out of it. Gaming is my form of self-care, so I just need to be careful to ensure I'm still loving it while streaming, and sometimes I just can't do both and that is okay. 
In those moments, I take that break so that I can continue doing both of the things I love, gaming and streaming. August will mark three years streaming, so I have a ton to say on this. As a recovering people pleaser, in the past I struggled to find balance. Social media breeds a rising grind mindset that doesn't work for me as an autistic. I blame myself for not streaming five days a week and having a million fancy redeems since many full-time streamers do. I burnt out trying to compete, which led to me shutting down longer than I would have liked. It took a while to accept that my limits are different from others and that's okay. Recently, I focused on giving myself grace as opposed to having unrealistic expectations. Positive affirmations help even if we don't believe them at first. I deserve to prioritize myself and my well-being. I'm learning to work at my own pace, which ironically has helped me become more productive since I don't expect more than what's realistic anymore. Another strategy I use is slowing down via meditation, journaling, or unplugging from the internet for a bit. If I'm suffering from anxiety, I'll take my cat for a walk or listen to music to re-regulate. While I do have a set streaming schedule, I cancel or reschedule if I'm not in the headspace for it. I used to feel guilty since people look forward to my streams, but I'm grateful to have cultivated a community who understands and wants me to take care of myself. One thing I'm working on is better organization to offload some of the frontal lobe storage since that's in short supply these days. Making spreadsheets to organize ideas and stream plans helps me prioritize better too. Something about seeing it written helps. Lastly, setting and maintaining healthy boundaries. As much as I'd love to fame with everyone for hours after a 5 plus hour stream, that's not always going to be realistic for me. Organizing community nights when I'm not spreading helps me, I think they meant streaming, helps me maintain connection with my viewers while also maintaining my energy levels. I briefly tried streaming 3 days a week and it wasn't sustainable. Now I went back to 2 days. I've been consistent for the past year. Basically, it's okay to march to the beat of your own beat of your own drum. You know yourself best. Now that I'm taking more time for myself, I have more energy and excitement when I do go live. Thanks for listening, and I wish everyone the best of luck. Don't be afraid to try something different. If what you're currently doing isn't working, you never know where it can lead. I usually balance my mental well-being while being a streamer by taking breaks when I need it, regardless of any schedule I have or what my audience might think. By breaks, I don't only mean break from streaming, but also certain social media platforms in general, especially Twitter. If my mental health is at rock bottom, my streams would most likely not be entertaining anyway, so resetting and going back to content once I feel better is the best choice in my opinion. Other than that, I surround myself with other content creators that I am comfortable around, motivate me to make the best content I can, and encourage the ideas that I have. Having a positive environment does wonders for your mental health. My advice for balancing self-care and streaming is to make a list of what is important to you outside of streaming and schedule time during the week to get those done, just like you would schedule a stream. For me, that includes time seeing your family or friends, cleaning, and being physically active, just to name a few. I also think it's important to check in with yourself a few times a week and be honest. If you're just going through the motions of streaming because you feel like you have to, you will eventually run out of steam. It's important to take breaks when they are needed and remember that you are a person first and a content creator second. Balance with taking care of mental well-being and being a streamer can be kind of difficult. Personally for me, it took a year or two to figure it out and I still struggle with it from time to time. However, some of the most helpful things I've done is therapy, knowing my own limits with my mental well-being and just being open with my community. If I don't feel like I can't stream for some reason, I say, sorry guys, I can't do it. Learning where you can't cross, I feel, is the most important and knowing yourself with how you feel about everything. It's okay to take breaks, it's okay to need time for yourself, which sometimes is difficult and a long lesson to learn, but a needed lesson, I feel, especially for me. I honestly have an insane schedule because of university, but I try to get my work done on weekends and off days so I can prepare any off-stream writing or planning I need to do. Usually that means sitting down and planning the week out on paper. If I start to feel burnt out, I try to take a walk around campus and put away my phone for a couple of hours. Personally, sleep affects my mood a whole lot. So I try to go to bed before midnight and space out my work so it doesn't all fall on one day. Same thing with food. My schedule doesn't let me be at home for lunches and sometimes dinners, but I've started planning ahead or meal prepping so I either have something to eat at work or I can easily have a proper, proper meal when I'm home. I think the most important thing is to remind yourself that you're not at the end point and instead always progressing. You're always going to have higher expectations for yourself no matter where you are, but remind yourself of just why those expectations have gotten higher to begin with. Don't be afraid to take a step back and replan things you feel could be better. Mental health in general while being is really important to me, but I'm also the kind of person that overextends themselves. I noticed around my first full year of streaming that I hadn't accomplished a lot of things I wanted to do, both in content and in my personal life. 
I was just kind of floating around doing what I knew would make other people happy. Now I have a lifestyle that's more sustainable so I can still do things for other people as well as myself. Here's how I do it. The first thing is I have a fairly strict schedule for myself. I always found myself saying there wasn't enough hours in the day, but then I realized I just didn't wake up early enough. I have everything in my day planned out. I schedule all editing time, stream time, workout time, eating time, workout or work time, etc. This helps me a lot because I'm the kind of person that's scared of running out of energy in the middle of the day. Like, you know how you end up just sitting around on the weekend when you have plans at one? That's how I'll live my entire life if I don't have the minuscule things scheduled. I also have work, stream, life balance. I adore streaming and working to grow my community, but I have sustainably less drive when I'm not taking care of myself. Some of my favorite things I do to give myself an energy boost is working out. Having something that's solely about me is grounding. I also take lots of breaks as needed. Back in December, I got fired from my job. My first instinct was to grind content, but I haven't been unemployed for eight years, so I took two weeks off of everything and just relaxed. Honestly, that was a major reset I needed. I'm also very honest, and this is the best thing I've done for my mental health. As an introvert, I get exhausted being around people, so to prevent myself from exhausting too much, I do minimal collabs or join collabs where I can stay muted most of the time. This has probably closed plenty of doors for me, but it keeps me happy and consistent. I think that's like the biggest thing everyone should do, whether it's content or work or relationships, creating those boundaries and holding yourself accountable in realistic ways. Navigating the complexities of balancing streaming with the demands of everyday life is a multifaceted challenge. Personally, I juggle a full-time corporate role alongside my part-time streaming endeavors. The unfortunate reality is that unlike my streaming commitments, I can't really call in mentally unwell to my corporate job. Therefore, when my mental health falters, I prioritize taking a break from streaming over jeopardizing my primary employment. It's crucial for streamers and content creators to recognize the importance of time off. Despite maintaining another job, I'm effectively on the clock 24-7, engaging with social media and networking to sustain my streaming presence. So I advocate for a couple disconnection for a- oh my gosh! Dude, I've been reading things for over an hour, okay? I'm so sorry. Complete disconnection from all things streaming related. Stepping away from screens and going outside can provide essential mental rejuvenation. Additionally, prioritizing sufficient sleep is imperative as sleep deprivation drastically impacts our overall, overall well-being. I do my best to create a streaming schedule that allows me to get the most rest, also fostering transparency with your community about moments of emotional strain, creates a culture of mutual support and understanding. Just as we strive to cultivate safe and inclusive spaces for our viewers, it's equally vital to prioritize our own well-being within our online communities. This is something I'm personally trying to get better at. When I first became a streamer two years ago, I used it as a method to escape the real world. I just moved halfway across the country to escape a toxic environment that left me mentally and physically drained and exhausted of life. Streaming was something I could do to meet people who never knew me and how miserable I was at the time. I set up a facade about me being happy and always energetic until I decided I was tired of living in a fake reality that I created. Then I decided that I would work on myself. I couldn't afford therapy at that time and decided I would be real towards chat. I wanted my community to know that I was human and that I had very real and very strong emotions, so I decided that I would allow myself to be angry, sad, relaxed, energetic, or happy on stream as long as it was real. It honestly helped my mental health in general because I could really regulate how I felt in the moment without feeling judged or guilty that I'm showing that side of me because if the people watching didn't enjoy or felt comfortable, they can just leave. I started to learn that it was okay to take days off when I needed to. I didn't expect the content creators I watched to push out content every day, so why should I expect that out of myself? Realizing that I could take days off to play the game I wanted to, hang out with friends or family, or just to cry in bed was totally okay and extremely healthy. I think it's really important to realize life is more important as putting content out. Forgetting about the numbers and the algorithm for a day or two weeks is never ever anything to feel bad about and I have finally accepted that. I still have my bad days where habits resurface but I'm still forever proud of myself for becoming the person I am and I hope my rambling can help someone else too. I think a big part of self-care while balancing streaming is knowing when you're feeling overwhelmed. For me, I start noticing it when I feel lethargic and I don't have the motivation to stream which is sad because I love streaming. I have to remind myself that it's okay to take a break. Stepping away for a few days gives me that time to recharge and get back to my normal self. Your community will always understand and their kind words can make your mind feel a little at ease. To be fully honest, I'm not really balancing mental health and streaming. I'm not sure if that counts as an answer, but I've stepped away from streaming because of my mental health and stress about school. I think streaming can be a blessing mostly though for my mental health because it gives me something to look forward to. 
It's just difficult to do so when you've even lost the motivation to stream. I don't want to confuse my viewers either by appearing and disappearing. Kind of a weird answer, but that's how I'm going about streaming and mental health right now. Keeping mental well-being is kind of hard, especially when you deal with a lot of imposter syndrome. I've been struggling for years with managing my mental health, mainly because the low numbers tend to be a huge demotivation when streaming is something I do for fun, hoping to entertain people. Though recently I've come to terms with that just a tiny bit. I realized that I forgot the reason why I even started content creation. For myself. I wanted to create content for myself to look back to, to see, but also for the close people from afar that wanted to see me. I take time on the weekends to think about what I mainly want to do and I've decided I want to make things for myself. Personally, keeping the mental balance is pretty easy for me. While I work full time, I have a small group of other small streamers that I know I can rely on. If I need to take a step back and focus on my personal life, my career, anything of the sort, they are always more than happy for me to prioritize that and will be waiting for when I'm in a good headspace to come back. Unfortunately for me, streaming is more of a hobby than anything else, and while I love to stretch that creative limb, I don't stream crazy often. I never force myself to stream either. Streaming never becomes a mental toll to me because I do it only when I can and when I can. Know when to disconnect and give that personal space for yourself to decompress, such as touching grass, going to a place you've never been to before, try a new hobby or practice current ones, try something you never tried before, walks, reading, writing. Turn those notifications off. Your life doesn't have to revolve around social media. We get so caught up in the grind and other people's lives. We forget to ground ourselves and just live our life. Always practice self-love and self-care. I personally have a strict streaming schedule and a content editing day. That way, I don't overlap my personal days with work days. To be completely honest, I have a German Shepherd with a ton of energy, so I'm always making sure she has enough attention and plays outside. This is my biggest motivator to take time to go outside and breathe fresh air. On days when I notice my anxiety is bad, I tend to take more time to pause and reframe things. I've tried meditating, which has helped a lot with that. I also tend to do a lot of self-care, whether it's by taking time to read a book, do skincare, go out with a friend, and even treating myself. I think hanging out with friends outside of content is important. My friends 1000% help keep me sane, and I tend to talk with them about things that trouble me, and they tend to remind me of how much of an overthinker I am. Since I usually always stream in the late evening night, I usually have the afternoon to have me time where I just relax by watching videos or just chilling. I haven't had this since I'm back from college for the summer, but when I was up at college, if I ever felt like I needed to stream, I looked through each of my games and asked myself, do I really want to stream this game? If I say no to all my options, I now know I genuinely just don't want to stream that day or just spend the evening relaxing or VC with friends. As a content creator and a university student, it is hard to definitely handle my mental state. So one thing that I will always stand by is taking a break, but it takes longer for you to recover from burnout than it does to prevent it. If need be, I will treat myself and comfort myself because without me, there really is no content. Streaming is not my job, it's my hobby, but sometimes I lose sight of that, so the way I deal with my mental health is doing the most boring mundane things and taking joy in it. Like going to wash dishes and just doing that, not having a podcast on, not listening to TV, just taking life slow. Further, I take a lot of breaks. It absolutely has tanked my career multiple times. However, it is worth it for my mental as I would rather stream happy than stream as a job. Streaming really sucks ass and only the most mentally ill can make it big. So when you realize that it's not all that it's cracked up to be and you just do it when you want to do it, then it becomes fun. Finding balance between streaming, content creation, and self-care is crucial for maintaining both productivity and well-being. Establishing a set schedule for streams and filming content has been a great start for me. It helps ensure consistency while allowing for predictability in your routine. It's commendable to strive for full-time content creation, but it's equally important to prioritize self-care and avoid burnout. Remember that quality content comes from a refreshed mind and a healthy body. Incorporating regular breaks, setting boundaries, and listening to your body's signals are essential steps in finding that equilibrium. By being mindful of your limits and taking proactive steps to prevent overworking, you can nurture both your passion for creating and your overall well-being. I have a wonderful set of mods and VIPs who force me to take breaks when they can see I'm getting close to burnout, which really helps as well. I'm not considered a consistent streamer. I started being one more as of recently, but I found pushing yourself to stream doesn't work. If you can't be decent, there's no point of streaming that day, so I take a lot of days off, and whenever I do stream, it's whatever I want. A Val stream, maybe a horror game, maybe something else I enjoy doing. Never force yourself to do something that isn't working for you. If it isn't enjoyable, then you don't have to do it. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't leave your comfort zone, experiment some days, and find things that your viewers like and things that you also like. Never worry about that viewer count. People leave and go as they always do. All you want to do is make sure that you're trying your best.
streaming is something that I simply love to do. I think that going into it without any expectations and adopting a we'll see what happens approach does help with my mental well-being. If something bigger comes from it, then great. If not, I'm, com I'm completely satisfied with whatever I have right now. Would I love to stream as my full-time gig? Yes. But I also know that very few are able to do so, so I look at it as a, as a hobby and whatever happens, happens. Adding that unnecessary obstacle of I must make a livable wage from this adds so much stress to the experience, especially knowing the slim percentage of people who can do that. So preserve your peace, preserve your peace of mind and treat streaming like a hobby slash side thing until you don't have to anymore. It's also important to factor in some other hobbies in the mix, something that allows you to disconnect from for a bit, but still enjoy yourself. It could be very draining to strictly do school work and stream stuff because both demand a certain level of alertness and interaction. Having a hobby that's just enjoyable and where you can just lose yourself in there is so freeing. I think also not being afraid to take that day off is important. Sometimes you just don't feel love for it, you don't have the energy to be an entertainer and that's totally okay. As a streamer, you do have that option and people who like what you do will not mind. It'll only make them more eager for your return. You're an entertainer, yes, but you're also human. Listen to your body and have fun with it. I take care of my mental well-being while being a streamer by just doing whatever content I want, having a loose schedule, and not caring about the numbers. It's much more enjoyable that way and puts less stress on me and allows me to be flexible with what I put out there. I also remember to take a lot of breaks to refresh my mental health as well. Alright, so... Well, this is quite a difficult question. Um, managing mental health as well as any other project at least for me, has always been quite difficult. I've always been a person who tends to have a lot of projects and a lot of ideas at the same time. So I try to like multitask all of them, and most of the time I can't finish them. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And it uh, overall takes a toll on my mental health. But something I, I've caught myself doing more and more, I mean not caught myself because it's not a negative thing, something that I've been doing more and more recently with content creation is to treat it simply as a hobby not looking to grow not looking to anything i mean of course putting in the work to promote myself get myself out there um follow like different tips to get my name out there but overall not treat it as a numbers are everything game because doing it like that normally puts a lot of stress on me um puts the bar quite high for me to jump over i'm a really like a critical person mostly of myself like I always think I mean everyone can improve certain things but there comes a point where you just got to say do I want to improve or do I want to have fun um, being a student as well it's hard to manage like personal life well-being uh, studying and also streaming and content creation at the same time so for example for YouTube videos I don't have a strict schedule I just push them out whenever I finish them Streaming, I don't usually stream that much, maybe on Saturdays, Sundays, maybe sometimes at night. Not like in the middle of, in the middle of the night, but I mean like, um, I don't know, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. to 9, something like that. Um, so yeah, overall, managing self-care and mental health and streaming and studying at the same time is quite a daunting task. But one of the things I find helps me is to treat streaming and basically every project I have as a passion project. And that allows me to put in the work without really feeling the repercussions or the burnout or stuff. So to give a, a more complex answer than just, oh, I treat it as a passion project. Well, I normally try to allocate certain times to content creation where I don't have much going on. Like, um, I don't know how to say it in English. Over here in Spanish, we call it Tiempo de Muertos. So like free time basically, but free time where I don't really want to be doing anything else. It's different from like the usual free time, the uh, the like, okay, so I have a couple minutes between classes. I mean like maybe I have two, three hours to spare. So I spend a while making a video or writing a script. Uh, I'm constantly writing down ideas. I have a, a notion page with a ton of ideas. I'll probably not do a couple, most of them but I have them there in case I ever want to do something like that. I normally try not to discriminate between the ideas too much, like to filter them out too much. I try just grabbing one at random, making a video on it and see if I like it, and if I do, I just send it out into the world. So I treat it more as a passion project that allows me to also put a ton of energy into self-care 
and basically my personal life because I don't want to I don't want to leave that behind because of school and content creation stuff. So I think it's a pretty healthy balance. There are things I could improve. I think uh, sometimes I let go of content creation and that leads me to feel a bit demotivated. And so it's just a, a thing of being consistent um, but not letting go of personal life and uh, responsibilities. Uh, whether it be with myself, with others, with school, with my mental health, with anything like that. Making myself absorb sunlight and sleep has been helping a lot. Even making a point to walk away from my PC sometimes helps a lot. Streaming really helps with me love myself. Working on making my stream better gives me sense that's... Oh my god, that's so creepy. <laughs> I'm super uncomfortable on camera and working through that has really helped me feel more comfortable with myself. I'm fortunate that my experience has been so positive because I've had friends deal with all sorts of, har of harassment, both publicly and privately. Honestly, being a straight white cisgender man makes streaming so much easier because everything I do or say because not everything I do or say is being scrutinized to the same degree people not in my position in society go through. If I'm honest, I don't balance it very well. My life ends up getting completely consumed by content and I end up falling, failing to look after myself. Dude, it's like 1am. I'm sorry, I can't read right now. I'm on an indefinite break at the moment because of it and it's definitely something I'm trying to work on before I return to regular streaming. Before the break, I did start streaming every other day instead of every day, so I had time in between for myself, but I'd still always be thinking about content and upcoming streams. I think first and foremost, if I'm absolutely drained or having a really bad day or I'm sick, I give myself permission to skip stream. Personal health always has to come first. That being said, I tried to make a schedule for myself that I felt I could maintain even on a busy week so that I know I'll have the space to show up the way I want to, so I opt for a three-day stream schedule that includes two weekend night streams for me. That way I have plenty of time to recuperate before my work week. Sometimes streams just don't go well. I don't mean to refer to metrics, but rather sometimes the vibes drag me down rather than lift me up. The majority of the time it's the opposite, but let's say I have to ban a couple people in chat one day, I really try to cut myself slack and give myself the space to feel disappointed. I spent a long time being hard on myself for everything, so learning self-forgiveness has been really important to me. Also, I personally have found that routine helps me a lot, and that starting small, like taking a vitamin and working up to finding days that work best to exercise or stream, has made a huge difference for me. It hasn't been easy, but I think trial and error and keeping track of what has made me feel good versus what hasn't worked has gone a long way for me. You okay? Yeah. I'm so sorry. That is terrifying. I usually read a book or watch some TV in my downtime after streams. Sometimes I'll take a nap, but it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I'm pretty bad at self-care routine, so I usually just do whatever hobby that I'm in the mood for. My balance self-care and streaming was definitely a bit tricky for me at first, but it's mostly due to my community. They want me to take care of myself, and they understand that I'm a person who has wants, needs, someone who gets sick, or experiences burnout. If I say I need a week, they wholeheartedly support that and actively encourage me to not encourage me to take a break when necessary. Not only that, but I have redeems to help me help remind me to drink water or to stretch, little things like that. My community loves to use them, almost like I'm a little plant that they help take care of. Another aspect is my housemate slash my friends. Whether online or IRL friends, they check in with me if I seem to drop in energy. I've gotten much better at realizing when I need some time thanks to their check-ins. I've found that the best thing to do for your mental well-being as a streamer or content creator is to give yourself the time and flexibility to step back when you need to. Content creation can be demanding, often feeling like you need to keep working on stuff and staying consistent, but being able to take breaks when you need helps not only to keep yourself sane, but it also makes better content in the long run. I found out very early on that it's better to postpone or cancel a stream than to do it when your heart's not in it. People can tell if you're having fun with it and it makes it makes for a less engaging stream or piece of content if you're not in the right headspace. Taking the time to take a break and step back for a bit can help you feel more refreshed in the long run and get back to streaming or creating content in the best way possible. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around. This was probably another long video. Sorry. I would love to hear if you have any advice for streamers or anyone in general really about mental health. Feel free to drop them in the comments. If you have any thoughts, opinions, ideas, or feedback for me or anybody in the video, feel free to drop them in the comments as well. If you want to see more videos where I interview streamers, also let me know. I really enjoy it and I love getting to see the variety of answers. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover, also let me know. Bye-bye!